Hey, what's up doggies? It's your little buddy Adam here with another installment of the Web Intersect 2.0 Social Network Production Training Series. In this lesson we're going to cover the forgotten password mechanism, which is a mechanism that you can give your users in case they forget their login password. Okay, now what you want to do is go into PHP My Admin and make sure you click your user options table and go to the structure view of that table. Now after answer you want to add one field so go down to add one at the end of table after answer field go and we're going to name this temp underscore pass oops underscore pass we're going to make sure this is var char 255 save okay so now you see you have an extra field in the user options table called temp pass now what's going to happen is we're going to store their temporary password in that field and when they click the email link then we're going to take that password and put it in their password here in the users table that way they can successfully log in with that temporary password because their old password will just get swapped out for the new temporary one alright before I discuss the code logic let me demonstrate how the whole thing will work and so let's say I'm trying to log in but I've forgotten my password for my account and I click the forgot your password link which I don't have that as a live link yet to that forgot password page but while in production I can just navigate straight to that and while you're testing you can navigate straight to any of these files that you want if you don't happen to have links live to them yet okay so on this page it says generate a temporary login password step one enter your email address so I'm gonna enter my email address for my account here at web intersect and then I'll click generate temporary login password okay so after the Ajax runs and everything is successful and my email is found to be an account in the system it says step two check your email inbox in a few minutes you can close this window or tab if you like so I'll just close this window now I'm in my email application and I just got this email from Web Intersect. It says, Hello Adam, this is an automated message from Web Intersect. If you did not recently initiate the forgot password process, please disregard this email. You indicated that you forgot your login password. We can generate a temporary password for you to log in with. Then once logged in, you can change your password to anything you like. Now changing their password back to anything they like that will come in a later tutorial or you're going to program that on your own way down the line when you're creating your user account options page or whatever you could just stick in the ability for them to change their password to a different password at any time and that's a feature that you would want to give your site users anyway even if they don't forget their password you want to allow them to change their password to anything they want at any time as many times as they want. Alright, so it says after you click the link below, your password to log in will be whatever. See, what I made it do is cut the first four characters off of their email address and then add five digits onto the end of that. Just five randomly generated digits. And I'll be explaining the code that generates that in just a second. So let me click here now. And here I am at the web intersect login page that means my script worked okay so I'm gonna take the password Adam 42713 which was the temporary password that I got in that email and I'll put my email address in here and see if I can log in with these new credentials okay it works and it navigated me straight to my profile page and it is the viewer the page owner logged in and verified yes so everything worked out fine so in the database what happened is the system took the temporary password out of the user options table and put it into the actual password field in the main users table for that user when they click that email to verify that it's them and they want to go ahead and make that temporary password their actual password so when they click the email link that's when the temp pass goes into their real password field and then you just clear out the temporary pass field from the user options table just make it empty after the switch occurs okay let me tell you what I did to get to this point all I did was took uh, login.php and I named it forgotpass.php and I gave it a different title and I changed the JavaScript a little bit the CSS a little bit and the PHP a little bit and we had to change the HTML form a little bit because all we need in this form is an email field and if this looks funny the on focus event code you can see is JavaScript 
I place directly in the on focus event to clear the status element whenever this text field is focused in with the mouse cursor. But this form is just like the other forms that we've been working with. We have the button forgot pass button and on click of that button forgot pass function in JavaScript up here runs and I'll explain that to you in just a second. And so like the other forms this form does not post like a traditional form it posts using Ajax. Okay so the user puts in their email and then they hit the button here and this forgot pass function fires off in JavaScript. Yeah, let me show you the CSS first. CSS is very simple. It's just to style the form, basic stuff. You can do way better than that. Okay, so let's talk about this JavaScript forgot pass function. And if you've been paying attention so far, this JavaScript function is very similar to the ones that we've been working with so far that deal with sending AJAX to PHP and getting response back. Same stuff. So when forgot pass function runs, we're going to scoop up the email from the email field and we have it in a local variable called E. So then we want to evaluate to see if E is empty. If it's an empty value, then you want to put in the status field, please type in your email address. Else, if it's not empty, that means your email is in the field and we can process things to see if they have an actual account with us. So you target the form submit button and you make the style display none or you make the submit button disabled or you can use visibility hidden whatever procedure you want to use to remove the button functionality until Ajax return comes back so I'm just making the button altogether disappear until the Ajax process is finished I don't want the user clicking it again while Ajax is processing and then I target the status element an inner HTML property and we put in the words please wait dot 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 and like I said it before a hundred times this is where you can add your animated image loaders you just put an image tag right in there for your animated dot gifs or whatever so you don't just have to have the words please wait or processing or anything like that you can have a nice animated little loader thing you just put the image tag right there and then we have the variable for the Ajax object and then we have the Ajax on ready state change function here and everything inside of that is waiting for the response really from PHP. So down here is where the Ajax send actually makes that request happen to PHP. But this Ajax on ready state change function is your kind of your return data listener. So if the Ajax return is true, then we make a local variable called response out of the Ajax.response text. And I only did that because I was writing it in a few lines down here and I didn't want to keep writing ajax.response.txt so I just made it into a smaller word called response. So I say if response is equal to success then I'm going to take the forgot pass form its whole inner HTML and replace it with this message. Step 2. Check your email inbox in a few minutes. You can close this window or tab if you like. Okay so that's if the message from PHP coming back is success. Else if the message from PHP is no exist, then in the status we're going to type in sorry that email address is not in our system. Else if the response from PHP is email send failed, then we write this message. Mail functioned fail to execute. Else just some unknown error occurred that our script did not account for and we're getting some kind of weird data back from PHP that we shouldn't be then this will show. Okay. And that's all there is to that JavaScript, buddies. Now, the last thing we have is the PHP. First, you're going to include once PHP includes folder check login status.php. So you want to include that check login status file. And then we're going to check to see if user OK equals true from that file. Then we're going to header them to their user profile page using their session variables because if the user OK equals true that means their session is set and they're logged in. Okay so you have two code blocks here. This one is just to usher people away from the page if they happen to be logged in. These are the two main code blocks we're going to be discussing. Now this first code block Ajax calls this code to execute. So that's basically the code that executes when you click the submit button in that form. Or that button that says generate new password. After they put their email in, they click the button, this code runs here and Ajax calls this to execute. Now this code here is called to execute when the user clicks that link inside of the email 
that they get when they run the generate password functionality. So let's talk about the first one which is when the user first uses the form and our system is going to create a random temporary password for them and then it's going to email them. That's what this script does. So the first thing is we take the email, the posted email address that they're typing in and we filter it or sanitize it through the MySQLi real escape string function. Then we run this query right here with this SQL syntax that reads select ID username from the users table where their email address equals this user's email address that they're typing in right now and activated equals one. So basically that's a way to check and see if they actually exist, if that email address is actually an account within the system and you can also get their ID and username at the same time pulled out. So we run MySQL num rows right here on that query that produces a variable called num rows that we can then evaluate. We say if num rows is greater than zero that means they do exist because num rows is one that means they were found we're gonna run this while loop to pull out their ID and username information out of their database row. So once we have access to the ID and the username, we can then set out to create their temporary password. So we take their email address and we cut the first four characters off. That's what this line does. It cuts the first four characters off the front of their email address. Then we create a five digit random number. By putting one or 10,000 here and 99,999, that gives you a five digit random number in between those two numbers. And then all I do is I take the email cut, the first four characters, and then stick that random number on the end. Then I hash it using MD5 and it becomes hash temp pass. Then I'm going to run a query to update the user options table for this user. And we're going to place this hash temp password in the temp pass field that we just created a minute ago, where username equals this user and that syntax and query runs right here. Then we simply want to set up an email to email the person. So the to address is their email address. From is your autoresponder email address at your website. And then you establish the headers here and you can see we're using an HTML formatted email again. So that way we can put tags and design it the way we want. The subject of the email is web intersect temporary password. Now you saw in the beginning of the video what the email looked like that I was looking at. You saw how my password was in it and everything. That's what all of this information here you see in the messages. It says hello you, whatever the username is. This is an automated message from Web Intersect. If you did not recently initiate the forgot password process, please disregard this email. You indicated that you forgot your password, blah, 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 blah. And then here's the link. You put your website there and then your forgot pass.php script and you want the variables, URL encoded variables, the username and the password to be appended onto the end of that URL. And then to execute the mail function, you can just you can actually put it in an if condition and it will return true or false. It will return true if it actually mails successfully and it'll return false if it has trouble mailing for some reason. So you can say if mail, you run your mail function and if it returns true, it'll you'll echo success to Ajax and then exit the script. Else, that means mail is false, it failed, then you can echo back to Ajax, email send failed, and exit the script. Else, this else condition is for this if condition num rows here. So if num rows is equal to zero, that means they're not found, then you're going to echo no exist, and then the script exits right here. And that is the whole parsing mechanism for sending them the email and putting their temporary password that you generate within their user options table temp pass field. Now when they click that link in the email that they get sent, let me collapse this, so when they click that link in the email that they get sent, this code is going to be called to run only in that instance. Alright, so let's open it up and explain it real quick. So this code only runs if the get you and the get p variables are present in the request. So that means they have to be in the URL string as get type variables. Then we take that username and we run it through preg replace just to sanitize it. And we also get the p variable into a local variable called temp pass hash. 
Then we're going to check the string length of the temporary password hash just to make sure it's greater than 5 or you can make this greater than any number you want. You can put 10 there if you want because it's going to be a hash anyway so you'll know it'll be more than 10 characters so you just put a 10 there. You just want to make sure that this isn't empty because if people post to this script with a username of some user in your system and a temporary password that's empty that would match most users in your system. So if it is empty or if it's even less than 10 characters even we're just going to exit the script completely. We're not going to give any indication of what's going on either. That should never occur. And then what you do is you select ID from the user options table where the username is equal to this user and the temp pass is equal to the temp pass coming in through the URL variables. Then we run that query here to select the ID. And so everything has to match up just right in order for this num rows to give us a 1. And that's what we want. We want to make sure the user matches up with all this information from the user options table. So we run MySQL num rows on that query and that gives us how many rows were selected. And we want to make sure that there was just one match. So if num rows equals zero, that means no matches, then we header them to location message.php. There is no match for that username with that temporary password in the system. We cannot proceed. And you exit script. Alright, so if num rows is equal to one and there is a match, this else condition fires off and all of the code in it will execute. And we have MySQL fetch row. And I did that just so I can grab the ID value of this user's ID using the row variable and the zero index of the row variable array. So that allows you to get the access of that ID that you selected up here. Then we're going to run a query right here that has the SQL syntax of update the users table password field to the temporary pass hash where ID equals this user's ID and username equals you. Then we're going to run another query right here to update the user options table temp pass field and give it an empty value where username equals you. You just really you're emptying the temp pass field from the user options table and you're putting the value of the temp pass into their actual password field so they can then log in with that temporary password. And that is everything. So I'll collapse that back up. And all of this code will accompany this video. So you, if you happen to not see things clearly in the video or you're having problems with your syntax in your scripts, you can just copy my code and look at my code in another file and compare it to yours or whatever. Okay, so that takes care of making sure you have some kind of mechanism in place to where if your users forget their password they're not lost to you forever they can still come back to your site and log in because you'll let them generate a temporary password to log in with 